heard Isaac's prayer and she conceived. She, she got pregnant. Read. Verse 22. And the children struggled together within her womb. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Most High. So there was two children in her womb. They was fighting together. So she's asking the most, she's, they were fighting against each other, excuse me. She's asking the Most High, if you, are, if you have blessed me when I cannot have children, why am I going through so much pain? So she went to talk to the Most High God about it. These children were fighting day and night in this woman's womb. Read. Verse 23. And the Most High said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. So for the first time in history, the Most High was bringing two separate nationalities out of, out of one race of people. No other time in history did this happen. Usually you are what your father is. But he said, two nations are in thy womb. Nations is short for nationality. And he, and he told this woman, they are to be separated from birth. From birth, separate them. They were fighting in your womb. What are they going to do when they come out? They're going to fight. Read. And the Most High said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Two manner of people shall be separated from the time they come out of your womb. So they wasn't identical twins, you're going to find. They was what you would call paternal twins. They were paternal twins, okay? Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And he told the woman, one people shall be stronger than the other people. So you will have one people that are more stronger. They would have that physical prowess. They will be spiritually strong. They will be stronger than one. Read. And the elder shall serve the younger. And the first one that comes out is to be a servant to the younger child. Read. Verse 24. And when her days were and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And when her days to be delivered, what the most high showed her came to pass. There were twins in her womb. Read. Genesis 24 and 25. And the first came out red. All over like in hairy garment. The first came out red all over like in hairy garment. They say red because the blood showed forth through the skin. There's no such thing as black people per se. There's brown people. And there's no such thing as white people. There's red people. Okay? This paper is white. That's white. Okay? So this is a signifier. This is, a, this is an indicator. This nation, outside of all the other nations that were born in the earth, you can identify them by them being red. That's the nation of Edom. The first came out red all over like a hairy garment. Read. And they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. So he was one of the sons of Isaac. He was one of the sons of Isaac. But don't forget, he's the firstborn. It said in the verse prior, the elder shall serve the younger. So this child came out. It was meant to be a servant to Jacob. From the beginning, before they were born, it was meant that the second child would receive the promise. And what came out after, after uh, Esau? Genesis 25 and 26. And after that came his brother out. Now you notice it did not identify his brother. Why? Because his brother looked like everyone else. There was nothing that, that, that separated or differentiated Jacob from the rest of the people. So there was no need for an identification as far as the physical. But Esau had to be identified because he was different. And then came his, his brother Jacob out. Jacob is the son of the promise. He's the one that the Most High God promised that his older brother would serve. Now you understand that fight in the womb. They were fighting for the dominion and power and the promises 
promise to our forefathers, Abraham, our forefather Abraham. So Esau thought he had it because he came out first. But no. The Lord says the elder shall serve the younger. Read. Genesis chapter 25, verse 26. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's hill. His hand took hold of Esau's hill. So they were fighting all the way from the woman's womb. They were still fighting when they was pulling her out, pulling the babies out of the womb. And Jacob took hold of Esau's heel. Don't forget, the head is the top. That's the head. And the foot is the end. Read. And his name was called Jacob. And his name was called Jacob. Now why did Jacob take hold of his brother's heel? That's significant. Go to second Ezra's in your apocrypha. Here it is right here. You got one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go to second Ezra's in the apocrypha. Six and nine. Second Ezra six and nine. Read that. Second Ezra chapter six verse nine. Okay. For Esau is the end of the world. Start at the eighth verse. Second Ezra chapter six verse eight. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac. When Jacob and Esau were born of him. Same thing we're reading in Genesis 25. When Jacob and Esau was born of Isaac. Read. Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. What is this signifying? Read the next verse. Verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. So at the end of the world or rulership or in end times, Esau would be ruling. Esau is the end of the world. So at the end of the world, Esau would have dominion. Now, mind you, the promise that the elder shall serve the younger have not been fulfilled yet. Esau is the end of the world. So who's ruling in the end? Esau. The EU, the European powers, they're ruling. They're the end of the world. So I don't understand how people are teaching out there that Esau got destroyed somewhere and he's just disappeared off the face of the earth. When the Bible says he's at the end of the world. And who followeth? Second Ezra chapter 6 verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. To show you that once Esau fall, Jacob's rule will happen without separation. That's what it signified, his hand taking hold of Esau's heel. There's no separation. The head came out, that's the beginning. The foot is the end. And no sooner the foot fall, the hand of the minion of Jacob. Judah holding the scepter, ruling under Christ and the twelve disciples. And at that time, when Jacob is set up, after the end of this world, the prophecy will be fulfilled in Genesis 25 of the elder serving the younger. Now, if you believe that Esau is not in the earth or have, have been destroyed like some people are teaching, at what time did this prophecy get fulfilled that Esau served Jacob? Where is it? It hasn't happened yet. You're going to find out that Esau is ruling the world. And we're going to identify how they got into Europe and sometimes hide themselves under the seat of Japheth. And I wonder, why... There's nothing wrong with it. If it doesn't matter who you are and everybody's the same, why hide the fact that you're Esau? Why hide it? If everything is fine, why identify the black people as ham, identify other people according to the Bible who they are, but never identify Esau? Why? Because there's a pending judgment. There's a pending judgment. And I notice in... I notice in the churches, they defame Jacob. Mm -hmm. They call Jacob the deceiver in the churches. Why? Who set up the churches? They make Jacob out to be the bad guy when the promises was given to his mother before he was born. It wasn't his fault. He got the promises. It wasn't his fault. He was born to have the promises. They try to blame him like, oh, he was the deceiver. He was the evil one. Okay? Now let's get into it. 
Later down when you read in the chapter, it shows you that Esau took hold of this red pottage. Okay? He ate rare food, and therefore he was called Edom from that day. Edom means red. Lucifer,